providing dignity to lives lost to homelessness while also helping those in need get into the workplace. That's the driving force of a local program called Memorials Co-op Inc., an effort of St. Joseph's House of Hospitality. The group creates wooden burial caskets and urns for indigent community members after death. Members of the group are here to explain the impact of this project, not just in honoring the dead, but also in providing more life for the living. Joining me at the desk are Randy McDonald, program director, volunteer and mentor Chris Erbach, and volunteer advisor Greg Brooks. And welcome to all of you. I appreciate you being Thank here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. When we were first introduced to the story, we, we spoke with one of your colleagues, uh, Don Skillman, and he said he got involved because he was seeing people that he knew being buried in cardboard boxes. And it was an, it's an unimaginable thing to think um, that a human life could be dehumanized in such a way. And I'm curious as to, you know, how did this get started? And at what point did you say, you know what, that something has to change and we have to honor the lives of those lost who may not be able to afford a big burial like some people have? Mm -hmm. Randy, I'll give that to you. Sure. So uh, we actually got started uh, when Sister Grace of the House of Mercy asked for help in getting uh, loved ones buried. Uh, she said she had four or five families a week coming to her uh, looking for help in getting their loved ones buried. And she thought that if we built, if she could find someone that would build caskets, then that would go a long way in relieving the cost to that person's loved ones. Um, it was sort of uh, a misunderstanding of how the industry works, though, because uh, uh, the last thing the industry wants is us to be flooding the market with cheaper caskets, if you will. So have you had, so based on that, and just in terms of, we'll get into the basics of, mm -hmm. you know, yes. what you do, but um, have you had pushback then? We have had pushback from the industry, and what we've, what we've found is that we can create niche markets. One of those niche markets is green burials, and we build a green burial casket that is made without any metal and with all organic glues and pegs that hold it together. And uh, so through our uh, donation program, then people can get green burial caskets. We've also uh, got a link to uh, the Sisters of St. Joseph, where they've, s some of the nuns in retirement have signed up to, to get one of our caskets uh, when the time comes for them. So we've made that link and we're, we wanna uh, plug into, and part of our education program is to inform the public about how much they're spending on their memorial products and how much of their inheritance or their legacy is gonna be left over for their loved ones. Yeah. It's, I wanna point this out. So let's talk about cost when it comes to, because you really are working to serve a need mm -hmm. when it comes to the high cost of, of burial. So Monroe County does provide up to $1,250 for funeral and burial services for people unable to bear that financial burden. But depending on where you look, burials can cost anywhere from $1,000 to $4,000, and that's just for the burial. That does not include things like embalmment and memorial services and things of that nature. So when you look at that high cost, I mean, what options do people have if they don't have an option like Memorials Co-op Inc.? Uh, I'll give that to you, <laughs> Greg and Chris. I, I have no idea. I, I, I don't, doesn't sound to me like they have much of an option just to, just to go and hook up with some type of a, a service, um, a funeral home, for instance, and, and they're kind of at the beck and call of the funeral service to say, okay, you're gonna need this, this is what it's gonna cost. The only thing that we, that we can provide logically is, uh, is hand caskets with style, you know, that, that, that have uh, greater meaning to, to an individual or family that, that's trying to get, say goodbye to a loved one. And that, I think that's the dignity that Randy talked about is what, what I think really drew me to, to the, the process. It's, I, I, I know in terms of, of learning more about your work and talking with Don, uh, another option that people were saying was, was cremation. And, and that's not something that everybody would believe in, you know, to, to right. save on the cost. And this is an opportunity to really bypass something like that, especially if it does not um, align with one's religious, cultural, right. ethnic beliefs. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Plus the caskets are, 
are made simply, but they look nice and it can be more natural, the green caskets, and then the ones we make, it's simple woodworking. I mean, it may be simple, but you know, they look nice. I was going to say, so my, my colleague visited the workshop and was and mm -hmm. took, well, we have footage mm -hmm. um, of these caskets and they are, they're, they're the detail, they're very beautiful. I mean, these they, they look much more than just simple caskets when to yeah. an observer looking at them. Um, much detail and, and effort and love, uh, for sure, is put oh, into thanks. to each of them. So wh in what ways, you know, we've, we've talked about what uh, Memorials Co-op Inc. offers. What makes this program so unique in our community? I think Randy better answer that yeah. one. <laughs> so, so what's unique about it is that um, is that uh, we're, we're developing alternatives to the standard way people are uh, dealt with in the social justice system. So, so those types of systems are being, being dismantled in this, polit this current political environment than all the old ways of how do we get people back into the workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do is we deal with the whole individual. I'm also a yoga instructor, and so we give them, we teach them about life force energy and how they're using it and how they have their own power that they can, that they can uh, balance and, and use to do productive things. And uh, especially chronically homeless people are, uh, are not very very socially minded. They've learned to be recluse and not deal with other people. So we teach them uh, social skills to be able to work with people and to use their life force to do something productive. And it gives them confidence that they can do these things. So while providing a need, uh, individuals are being trained and they're learning a skill, they're learning social skills, a variety mm -hmm. of different things. Right. So talk to me a little bit, Chris and Greg. I want to know, in terms of the individuals coming in uh, and the volunteers that you're working with, talk about the progress that you've seen um, from folks who are a part of this, this effort, the volunteers. How have you seen people come in and be changed through their work? Well, Juan and can I say their names? Yeah, Juan, absolutely. Juan and, and Ryan, they've they're learning like how to work and how to you know organize stuff, and they're learning how we 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 have a lot of fun too, but we're very careful because we're working with dangerous saws and stuff. But I think it's like a camaraderie thing. For me, it's it's helped me become more confident, and for them, I think it helps them to feel like they're needed and wanted and that they they can do something you know uh, Juan and there's Juan right there <laughs> he uh, he doesn't have a lot of skills as far as woodworking skills and stuff but i mean he's learning i mean so i i do more takes a lot of pride he takes a lot of pride he, he likes a lot of pride like what they're doing what, what he's able to to accomplish and i think that that's really important to to keep in mind when when you are asking these these guys to help you make these things that we're teaching them that self confidence that they need self esteem and stuff self esteem yeah. and uh, you know we and we kind of give them a kind of a safe a safe zone to work they're take we're taking them out of the one community and then we're introducing them into another community gradually we're bringing them bringing them back and working with them uh, has been fun it really has been fun and you, you know you kind of take them under your wing a little bit and realize that you're making a part in their life in your own way. Yeah. However, however you see things and how you do how you how you train them, yeah. teach them skills that they're gonna they're gonna use maybe for a lifetime. I learned a lot from them, just yeah, the relationship exactly. thing yeah. going on because I was homeless at one time and stuff and I took advantage of the system. The system does work, I think, because if you take advantage of it and you cooperate and you're not, you know, drinking or drugging or causing problems, I think the system, as it is, works pretty well. The home, you know, the shelters and all the other stuff. So I think it's very important to try to get along with people. That's basically what we what we do there. We get along with each other. I'm sure we have problems sometimes. We have disagreements, but we work it out. So. Yeah. Tell me about 
how the process works. So if there is a family uh, or an individual who has lost someone and they need help and they need a casket or an urn, how does it work? Do they do you do they come to you? Uh, is there do you have thing, caskets already available? What's what's that process like? So we do have an inventory of caskets, and uh, and so n normally it goes through. Uh, a faith-based thing. It has up till now. Uh, so part of our outreach is to inform different uh, faith communities and just com the community in general on how to tap into this. But they, uh, you know, we have a donation program that's sort of based on WXXI kind of in kindness donation yeah. program is what we call it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, the, an example is that for $700, then, then donation to us, then we'll donate a casket for your loved one. For $1,200, we'll donate a casket for your loved one and also in that person's name, give a casket to an indigent or someone who doesn't, can't afford to buy one. So we're developing this program. Another example is that one of our volunteers makes these wooden hip-like toolboxes. And so a product of ours will be that uh, a memorial garden kit. So they'll, they'll have, get this wooden <laughs> box with everything they need to plant a memorial garden. Are you finding that you are overloaded with, with requests, or do you not have, you're shaking your head no, do you not have as many as you want? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of a, this is part of the mystery of the whole thing, right? As many as we can handle. Right? Well, and, and that's, that's the thing, it's a mystery that we don't know how these things actually work, but we'll, we deal with whatever comes our way. And so at times, then, then Chris has, had, has put in two or three days in a row to get a casket ready for a request. Because if someone needs a casket, it has to happen right away. So, Unfortunately, I'm, yeah. we, are, we are closing in on our okay. time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but to our viewers, you can support the work of Memorials Co-op Inc. through cash donations, volunteer work, or professional equipment. So to learn more, go to their Facebook page, and it is up on the screen right now, facebook.com slash memorials.co.op.inc.